Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Big day today. We are going to talk about what the best kind of paint is to use on your guitar. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, and by for a while, I mean like since the beginning, you'll know we kind of already did a video on this. I think it was called uh, how to paint your guitar, choosing your paint or something like that. Very long time ago. Uh, the information in it is still good but the video is just tough to watch. So in my defense, I was just starting out and it was one of my very first videos basically. Um, but yeah, you guys shouldn't have to sit there for 10 minutes and watch me go, um, and next we'll do urethane, like, no. So we're remaking the video. We've got more information this time, more paint to talk about, and I'm not gonna make it seem as though I haven't discovered coffee yet. Lots to go through here, so just a quick little spoiler before we jump into the different paint types. It's preference. There isn't necessarily a best type of paint to use. There are lots of different options with different application methods and it's gonna depend on what you have to work with, what kind of skills you have, and what kind of finish you're looking for. All of the finishes on this table will work for a guitar and will work well if you're doing a solid body electric or a semi-hollow electric, something like that. This video is not meant to apply to acoustic guitars. Acoustic guitars have a very limited scope of what should be applied to them, in my opinion. Things that don't affect resonance uh, on a quick basis here, like oils, uh, lacquers, nitrocellulose type things, and shellacs. Those are all fine for acoustics. But when you jump into an electric guitar where it's not going to sound any different depending on your finish, you open up a whole range of possibilities. So let's get into it. All right, we're going to start over here and work our way across. We've got some commonly available stuff on this table. We've got some of my favorite products, uh, all sorts of stuff to go through real quick. If you do want any of it, the vast majority is available in the Amazon link in the description. That's an affiliate link. So if you pick anything up through there, helps me out. And uh, yeah, I won't, won't put stuff in there unless I like it. So that's kind of good. Uh, for starters, spray cans. Lots of spray can options here. One of the most commonly available ones that you'll find is Rust-Oleum. Stuff like that, Rust-Oleum, Tremclad, Krylon. Yes, you can paint a guitar with these. I've done it many times. I've done tutorials on it. And yes, you can make it work properly and get a pr properly hard finish. One of the main issues with these ones, well, <laughs> first of all, they're spray cans. So you need to know how to work properly with spray cans. Second, they are, I believe, an acrylic enamel for the most part, depending on which Rust-Oleum product you get, which means their compatibility with other finishes is limited. So you kind of have to stick within the same system unless you're going with an acrylic and then clear coating it with, for example, a 2K Spray Max. Great option, by the way. The other thing is, if you don't do this right, if you have the wrong weather conditions, that kind of stuff, uh, you're gonna have a finish that never really hardens properly. And that's one of the main complaints I get with these, other than people using the wrong recoat times and causing wrinkling in them, they get finishes that six, eight weeks later still mark up if you put the guitar down on a towel or something like that. So you do have to be careful and make sure you're using them properly, but they can work. Next up, up here, I've got the Crystalac system. This is a, a water-based lacquer system that's developed by Crystalac, and they've got a whole bunch of dyes and stuff that you can use to mix your own stains. These are beautiful, great product. They've got a clear wood filler that I absolutely love. We're gonna be using this on an upcoming Les Paul style guitar kit from Solo Music Gear, and it's gonna be awesome. So I do recommend these. Um, maybe not so much this, but it's, you know, whatever, whatever's available to you. These are easy to apply. You can do them by hand or with a gun. Yeah, no complaints. It's good stuff. And it's a, a lacquer-like finish. Unlike most uh, acrylic lacquers, you can actually tint this so that it looks like a proper oil base or uh, solvent-based lacquer. It's got a little bit of ambering to it if you want, or you can put it on clear the way that a lot of acrylic lacquers look. On the note of water-based and waterborne product, we can also use acrylic paints. Uh, these are AutoWare, AutoWare, Wicked, they're kind of the same thing. They're all made by Createx. There are other types as well. I'm not really talking about like the Bob Ross type stuff. If you really know what you're doing, yes, you can make a proper guitar finish with those. But what I'm referring to here, these are automotive grade, designed to be used on cars, and then you clear coat them with a catalyzed urethane clear coat, and you end up with an automotive grade finish. Nothing wrong with that at all. These are safer and quite easy to use, uh, you know, as opposed to your average urethane. I really like these. I've done lots of guitars in them. When I get custom airbrush job requests, generally speaking, something along these lines is what I use. 
Moving to the back of the table here and having me squat in an odd position, we have oils. Now oil finishes are popular on a variety of guitars. They look beautiful on natural woods. That's one of the main purposes of them, one of the main ways to use them. You're not gonna use this over a color really, you might over a stain, but you can get a beautiful finish on any kind of beautiful natural wood with this stuff. We've got a variety here. We've got some Wadco Danish oil. Danish oil is less of a finish per se and more something that you use to kind of bring out the beauty of the wood and then you can coat over it because it's actually fairly broadly compatible. Crimson Guitars, they've got a, uh, a couple different viscosities of finishing oil, one to penetrate and then one for a final finish. Great product, big fan of that. This is Bellin's Teak Oil. Now Bellin, while well, Bellin doesn't really exist anymore, this is a slightly older can, but they've rebranded essentially as Mohawk and it's the same stuff and probably my favorite in terms of oils uh, is the Mohawk stuff. The teak oil is fantastic, but my favorite is this here, the modified tongue oil. I use this on all of my necks, and anytime I've got a guitar body that warrants an oil finish, I go for something along these lines. Here's another popular one for you. Duplicolor. Duplicolor is a lacquer-based product. It comes in a couple options. Generally speaking, it's an automotive product, or at least that's how they sell it. Um, so we've got some good spray can options. I've got a tutorial on how to paint your guitar with Duplicolor spray cans, but it also comes in quartz, probably gallons too, although I haven't seen it. I'm sure it does. So if you've got the equipment to be able to spray this stuff through a gun in a more professional fashion, that option is available to you. And these are pretty good products. One of my favorite options for this, because this is like an acrylic lacquer, it doesn't harden all that well. It's kind of got the same problem as Rust-Oleum, so if you don't do it properly, you can end up with that soft finish. But that can be alleviated by following the instructions to apply all your colors. Duplicolor comes in some awesome, vibrant colors. Case in point, these cool metallic colors I've got in front of me. And then you can go over that once again with your 2K Spray Max, which is a catalyzed polyurethane style clear coat. Uh, you definitely need a mask for this stuff. It will kill you but it's a two-part, it's got a hardener in it, and it hardens to a beautiful gloss or matte, if you choose the matte finish. My video on how to get a professional looking clear coat with spray cans demonstrates this product. Again, safety concerns are foremost on this one, um, but it is solvent proof and all of that, so it's got all the benefits of a proper automotive catalyzed urethane, and it makes a great option for going over top of a Duplicolor or something like that, or over a Spray Max, obviously. So now we've moved through quite a few interesting options here and we're going to get into some of the more classic stuff. Now, a few of these that I've got here are things that you would expect to see on factory finished guitars or on a lot of custom shop type guitars. Uh, I'm going to start by saying polyester I do not have here. Polyester is a really nice finish. It's a great option but it's very difficult to use if you don't have the right equipment and expertise for it. So a lot of fenders, after they stopped using nitrocellulose lacquer, moved to polyester. It is harder, it's a faster operating finish, it holds color wonderfully, um, but you can, you can ruin a paint gun with it really quick. You, you need to have the expertise and the stuff to do it. So if you're using polyester finishes, you're probably not coming to me for a video on what paint to use on your guitar. So that's really all I'm gonna tell you about that one. I generally don't use it. If I did, I'd probably pick up some Simtex sealer and that would be about it. Nitrocellulose lacquer. You've probably all heard of this. I occasionally get a question uh, to the effect of, can I use lacquer over nitrocellulose? Which is confusing because nitrocellulose is, is a type of lacquer. So yes, uh, you can use nitrocellulose lacquer over nitrocellulose lacquer. This is what they use currently in Fender Custom Shop, for example, a lot of high-end Gibsons uh, and you know, they used it on a lot of old guitars. It's not as durable as a polyester or a polyurethane. Uh, it will wear out, it will yellow over time, it will relic. Some people like that stuff, some don't, but those are the facts. Uh, also, it is much easier to repair than a lot of those uh, other finishing options, and in some cases, easier to apply. Lacquer melts into itself, so you don't have to worry about a lot of the problems that you have repairing, for example, a polyurethane finish you don't necessarily have to sand between coats. You certainly don't have to wet sand between coats, so stop doing that. Uh, it melts right in. So you can do nice little spot repairs, all sorts of stuff like that. You can do flow coats with extra solvent to level things off. So many cool options. 
You can mix your own stuff very easily in a lacquer. You can add your own metallics, your own pigments, your own dyes to create a candy-like finish. It's a perfect option, really, uh, except for those challenges that I said at the beginning, checking, relicking, yellowing, that sort of stuff, and a general kind of lack of durability. My favorite brand of lacquer, and yes, I've used a few, <laughs> is the Mohawk. They did send this to me. They're not, they didn't force me to say that, though. I asked for it for a reason. The Classic Instrument lacquer is fantastic. Uh, and it's my favorite brand currently. I'll let you guys know if that changes. Once again, available in the description. Uh, this stuff comes in spray cans as well. They're actually really nice spray cans. They're high quality. I demoed the Bellin ones before. Now they've been rebranded, like I said, under Mohawk's kind of larger brand. They also have their vinyl sealer, which you can use under it, which is a really fast sealer. You guys have seen me talk about all of this before. So that's enough. Uh, nitrocellulose lacquer, folks. Another really popular one, we're going to jump to the back here, is the poly finishes. So this is a catalyzed polyurethane finish. This is an automotive finish. This stuff is designed to be used on cars, but can also be used on guitars. It is more durable, offers a harder gloss in my opinion. So it's a little harder to polish, a little harder to use, and somehow even a little bit more unsafe <laughs> than the lacquer. Uh, but it gives you a fantastic finish. It's more durable. You don't need as many coats, and it's more clear usually. Doesn't yellow, yeah, harder to chip. I guess that fits under more durable. It's a good choice. So when I'm doing a commission style paint job, an airbrush type thing, generally speaking, this is gonna, gonna be what you'll see me using on it. It's just the best for protecting it and that sort of thing. Uh, also available, like I said before, in spray cans in the 2K Spray Max spray can. So good option if you don't have the equipment for this. This is harder to clean out of your gun and, uh, and it dries a lot faster than, for example, a lacquer or an acrylic. Just keep that in mind. <sighs> On that note of the automotive finishes, you can use that over a urethane because it's a polyurethane. So, oh, so these like House of Color, for example, um, you can get some insane, super vibrant show car colors with that and they've got better light fast properties. They, they protect against UV and that sort of thing a lot better than the lacquers do because that's what they're designed for. They're designed to be outside on a car or you know, in a show car room type thing. It's just a higher quality finish really, but again, harder to work with, more expensive, harder to get your hands on. Uh, it's a tougher finish to use. Not as easy for beginners, but when you've been doing it for a long time, it offers you some opportunities, some options that you don't see in the lacquers and the oils and that sort of thing. And then finally, a few outliers here, if you will. You can do wipe on polyurethanes. I've demonstrated this stuff in a couple videos and my viewers who have used it have had great success. Uh, for example, my, uh, my video on how to get a perfectly smooth poly finish, that's a hand rub polyurethane finish. That kind of stuff it's it's very easy to use it's hard to screw up it's got a fair bit of durability and it makes for a nice finish wax you can do a wax finish believe it or not and i did on that uh, on a telecaster not all that long ago and it turned out beautiful it's got a very specific feel to it there are different kinds of wax this is just a paste finishing wax but you can also get like a micro crystalline wax and that sort of thing um, again easy to apply I like to apply it with a little bit of heat so that it kind of soaks into the wood a little bit. It's got a different feel to it. It's not as durable as most of these film finishes, but it's also very easy to repair and update. So that's a good option if you're just starting out or if you really like wax finishes. And finally, shellac. Shellac is also relatively easy to apply. It can be done by hand or sprayed. Uh, and it's compatible with pretty much everything. So it can be used as basically a universal sealer you can use it to apply color to get, get kind of an interesting hue on your wood finishes. You can use it to do a French polish, and well, maybe you can't because I can't. French polishes are difficult. But it opens up kind of a, a whole bunch of possibilities. You can also mix your own to various weights and add different ambering, different colors and stuff uh, with the gum. The thing I will tell you about shellac is it's not very durable, so it comes with its own unique challenges there. It's, uh, it's not solvent proof at all. So if you're having a glass of whiskey while you play guitar and you spill some on your shellac, it can and probably will mess it up. 
So you do need to be mindful of that sort of thing. There are some great luthiers and guitar finishers and stuff out there who use shellac, like Cindy Guitars out of New York, for example, does some amazing work and uses pretty much all shellac finishes, I think, and, and uh, several of the other luthiers that I follow on, on Instagram and whatnot. And it's a very popular thing to use as a sealer, like I said. Well guys, I expect that this is going to spark some discussions, some debates, some questions, probably a bunch of people telling me I talk too much, that sort of thing. So let's have it out. Let's have a discussion in the comment section below. Let me know which one of these you would choose and why, or if you've got some completely different option out there. Hey, nothing's really off the table when it comes to finishing an electric guitar. So let's hear what you guys use and why. And if you've got questions about any of these, as always, drop them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Remember to subscribe. Have a good one.